Hey guys, SC Butter Me Up here with the my, well, my very first shard bound deck guide. So this is going to be for the green hero, aka General Varden, um, and this is going to be a control deck based on the seedling mechanics. So you can see the deck here. Feel free to pause the video to uh, copy it. Uh, a copy of this will be also on Shardvale. I'll link it in the description below. The gameplay that you're going to see in the background is just a, a game I played earlier using the deck. Uh, it's just there for some background basically, so don't pay too much attention. Although you can see some of the mechanics of the deck working like a charm in this game as well. Leave it to me. So the first thing I want to discuss is the win condition of the deck. This is why it was built and what it's for. This isn't an OTK deck that is becoming popular. So it isn't going to be able to, you know, pull off some mental six card combo that will win you the game. But it does have some pretty good combos which we'll go into later. So the win condition is to, of the deck is to take control early. Have as much card draw in your hands as possible and as many, many uh, low cost and efficient answers to to their combos. So as you've seen in that clip there, held on to the Tempest Hound to be able to uh, to take out his Plague Shrine. So it's all about knowing uh, you know what, what your opponent's going to play and being able to efficiently counter it. So for example... Chances are, Sabine, it's going to be a Plague Shrine deck. Hold on to your Tempest Town so you can uh, clear that up. And then basically what the deck is designed to do is to gradually take control, out, have more cards in your hand than your opponent, and just whittle them down slowly with efficient trades, efficient use of your spells, and yeah, just all round efficiency and having the right options, essentially. That's, that's the nuts and bolts and the win condition of the deck. Let's do this. Leave it to me. Okay. Right. Let's try this. The next thing I want to discuss is mulligans. Now, mulligans is a um, a kind of fluid term where it's not always going to be the same answer. But nine times out of ten, you kind of want to hold on to things like cultivators, quartermasters, tempest hounds. Sometimes I'm going to hold on to a Mimic if I think the deck I'm playing against is fairly slow as well, like a blue deck. Uh, but against Sabine, the purple, you kind of don't want that. I would, again, it's depends on what they do. So against Sabine, for example, I'm going to hold on to a Tempest Hound. That's generally quite a good hold as well, as it is uh, a guaranteed free damage to pretty much anything on the board. As, uh, you know, most Tempest Hound can pretty much reach anything turn two again i'm i'm gonna hold on to cultivators a lot of the time to start my card draw i'm gonna hold on to strip mines quite a lot of the time as well but again it's about knowing the deck you're gonna play or having a good guess but those those four cards are general a general holds um i wouldn't hold on to anything late game as this this deck has a lot of card draw so i wouldn't be too afraid about you know getting the cards you need go. later on as well again mimic 50-50 whether I hold on to that, but definitely your early game cards like your Cultivator, your Quartermasters, your Strip Mines is what you want to hold on to. Now the general guide of this deck is efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. So you want to be making really efficient trades with your minions. You want to be using uh, basically the full mana curve as possible on your cards and you want to be taking out the high value cards with your card combos. So the way I would play this deck is you can be aggressive with it if you hold a Life Spring Seedling. You can be aggressive with it if you've got, um, you know, the card combos to take out their, their big threats. And you can be aggressive with it if you've got early game board control using Temper Sounds and Cultivators. I would generally play mid. I would generally sort of hold around the mid where you can retreat if needed. And also... Uh, just have have that right sort of balance if you're if you've got a lot of late game cards in you want to hold back obviously if you've got like a tempest hound if you've got like a mimic ready to be used if you've got your life spring feel free to play aggressive as long as you can get value out of those cards and that's what this deck is all about it is about getting efficiency and value uh things like stone cold seedling and like a life spring to hold a middle ground position like I'm doing so in this game 
can really change that. And that's the idea of value as well. Uh, things like the Tempest Hound can get extreme value early on. As I said, they can take out Plague Shrines. They can take out sort of 2-2 cost minions. Against a range hero, they're pretty much guaranteed 6 damage if you have board control turn 2. Which can be massive, especially if that uh, hero doesn't have any sort of heals or relies on their health as a resource. Again, generally, you want to play this game dependent on your hand, but your hand is going to give you a lot of options if you uh, obviously play the deck right. I would never just play cards for the sake of playing cards. Um, sometimes you want to. Sometimes you want to, you know, play a Rock Crusher um, to, you know, have have a big body on on the on the board where you can essentially deep strike it as well as it does you know come from a boulder um which generally most maps have boulders everywhere so that's uh, that's a thought but generally you do not want to just play cards for the sake of playing them um i want to run over why i put grove tender in here because a lot of people would say that's a bad card it's a four cost three six body with a death howl now i like this card it has a lot of survivability and a lot of things have free health or combinations of three and two so basically you can hit it with your hero uh, for five damage the reason I run these is because obviously they synchronize with the cultivators so you can draw them out early. And also I run a copy of the Prodigy which basically means if your Grove Tender messes up and it drops a, a Blight Spore you know, in your spawn, you can use the Prodigy to get that uh, turned into a 4 cost minion which is a, a really good little combo. So we're going to run into combos of the deck. There's quite a few of them. Most of them are sort of uh, self-explanatory. Uh, but obviously I just want to show you the, the thought process behind that. So without any further ado, the combos in the deck. So I'm going to start with Stone Prison. So Stone Prison is a two cost card that will turn an enemy into a boulder for a single round. Now that's great for removing an, uh, a threat, but always, always, always use your Stone Prisons in conjunction with another card. So for example, a great little combo in this deck is Stone Prison Strip Mine. So what that will do is that's a four cost hard removal of any enemy minion or artifact. And it also lets you draw two cards. So that's a nice little combo. Stone Prison Precise Detonation will basically mean that the, if you can Stone Prison something in the middle of their pack and Precise Detonate it, it's going to hard remove one minion and deal four damage to pretty much anything within like a three tile radius. That's a massive combo for eight mana. Again, Stone Prison and and uh, Rock Crusher. So that's basically a six cost hard removal that spawns a six four. Again, Stone Prison, Rampaging Boulder, that's a 8 cost hard removal that spawns a 7-7 and another boulder as well when it dies. So again, that's got the little follow-up there. I mentioned earlier, uh, the Prodigy and the Grove Tender is a great little combo. So that'll basically stop any sort of bad shenanigans happening with Blight Spore Seedlings in your, in your deck. I'm here. Um, other combos, Zephyr Monk is a fantastic green card, it should be run in every green deck, and what that will do is give a minion plus two movement and charge, which means that uh, things like Zephyr Monk and Bloodthirster, well I'm sure you've all seen the videos on Reddit about how nasty that combo can be, so if your opponent's running a particularly large amount of squishy minions, um, particularly large amount of artifacts or particularly large amount of ranged minions blood faster zephyr monk will generally clear the board and do five damage to their hero as well you can also use this in combination with wind step to make sure your blood faster is essentially a flying minion that can go anywhere go. and move again after it's killed another good combo zephyr monk tiny island fenya That'll basically mean that uh, you can deep strike the Fenya, Zephyr Monk, and give it charge. So it will generally take out a high value target without any damage to itself as it will be stunned. Uh, what else? Mimic and any card is a great combo. So make sure you're getting the value out of that. And I run a single Petrify as well. 
So that's pretty much it for the combos. I mean, they're so fairly self-explanatory. Don't waste your stone oh, prisons. For goodness sake, make sure you use them in combos. Zephyr Monks, do not play on turn one, please, guys. The Zephyr Monks there for the war cry, not for the 2-2 okay. body. So make sure you're using them efficiently with either uh, Rampaging Boulders, Rock Crushers, or the Bloodthirster okay. as well. If you've enjoyed this, then please like and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. And hopefully see you guys around. I generally hang around the Discord and Reddit. Feel free to uh, chat to me, butter me up. And all the deck links and the description, uh, sorry, it will be in the description below. So yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed this, please let me know. Let me know what I can do better. I want to try and get these out on a regular basis and hopefully uh, contribute to this amazing community. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon.